uh, now, uh, what I suggest uh, during the uh, 25 minutes uh, which are left for general discussion is to concentrate, uh, to really concentrate on international aspects of all this. For instance, uh, Jean-Pierre, uh, if uh, you take the, well, the, the PTSD, the post-traumatic stress disorders, uh, if I am not mistaken, historically, uh, the interest in such uh, subjects uh, started after wars. Uh, and uh, of course, the Crimea War in the 19th century, but particularly the First World War uh, was quite important in this respect historically. Uh, but uh, there are not only war uh, disorders, uh, what the, 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 I mean, the PS, uh, PTSD caused by war, but also, for instance, the Great Depression. I don't know if uh, the Great Depression of the of the of the thirties of the nineteen thirties. I don't know if there were studies on the, the uh, uh, mental disorders uh, as a result of, of, of a great depression uh, such as uh, that of the nineteen thirties. And now, of course, we have the, uh, the COVID nineteen, and uh, it is very likely that future uh, uh, epidemics or pandemic uh, will have such uh, consequences. So my first question to, to you, Jean-Pierre, but also to the, to the panel, uh, my first question is, uh, are there already some basic uh, uh, principles that uh, should guide those who are in charge of, uh, uh, of, of uh, global governance in this, in this area? We are starting with the WHO, but not only the WHO, you know, other organizations, because again, you know, this topic is not often covered in, 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 in discussions on global health. So my first question is, can we draw some at least interesting uh, principles uh, on, on this uh, issue? And the second point I would like to make uh, also uh, as, a, as a question, uh, when I joked at the beginning of this session, uh, speaking of uh, mental disorders or uh, as, uh, as communicable uh, diseases, of course, it was not in the medical sense. Uh, it was uh, in the sociological uh, sense. And I remind all, all of us uh, of the very famous book by the French uh, sociologist Emile Durkheim, which was published, I think, at the end of the 19th century, which showed that the surprise of, of, of many, many uh, readers, that suicide was also a sociological phenomenon. So uh, if, 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 if suicide is, is uh, uh, also a psychological, a sociological phenomenon, not, not only uh, a health, a personal uh, situation, uh, maybe there are other uh, uh, kind of disorders. For instance, uh, alcohol. It's it's very. You, one doesn't need to be a, a great psychiatrist uh, to to understand that uh, uh, young people they drink uh, alcohol because they are together. Because and and, and, and when you are to, to, together, usually you that exacerbates certain kinds of, of behavior. So my question, my second question to to, to the panel is. Uh, if, if it is true that many mental disorders, many uh, mental diseases, well, the, 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 the psychic side of, uh, of health, if it is true that uh, the, the collective aspect is important, the societal aspect is important, uh, what, uh, what kind of consequences uh, should be uh, drawn from that uh, in trying to shape uh, policy uh, advice at the global level? So these are my two questions. Again, we don't have, to, there are many, many others, uh, but perhaps uh, we, we could take these two. So uh, maybe I will give the floor to uh, Professor Burioni, who would like to, to comment on this, and I will give the floor to the two other speakers before we conclude. Well, I go ahead and I will reload. Uh, surely, I think that this kind of, you know, massive uh, change of, uh, of life, because uh, we were stuck in our homes for, for, for a long time. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the strong effect, the heavy effect on the psychological equilibrium of the people, and also, unfortunately, 
had an effect also on the lack of screening of a lot of visits uh, for controlling, let's like, say, any kind of medical condition. So I think that uh, uh, with such an emergency, we will need to face uh, now and in the future uh, a really complex modification. I'm not talking about mental health because it's not my field, but uh, uh, I can assure you that uh, the disruption of the common, uh, let's say, medical practice uh, has been uh, very, very heavy because many hospitals literally closed down anything which was not uh, emergency or COVID-19, including mine. So uh, I'm, I'm, it doesn't surprise me that uh, also from the, uh, let's say, mental health point of view, the tone that uh, can be paid by the world population uh, is heavy. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Roberto. So Michael. Yes, uh, Jay. I I'm glad that uh, that in the company I'm in the company of two doctors here. So I'm glad you mentioned Durkheim because I'm a sociologist. Um, I think what we could learn from that is, um, as you said, it, it goes for suicide, but also for other mental health conditions. What what Durkheim showed that it's strongly connected with social cohesion so a feeling of being connected with other people and being integrated in social groups and i think now it it, it is certainly applies to also the time that we're living now in the pandemic what we see um, throughout the world is that we have this crisis teams and task forces of uh, very um um, uh, well um, equipped people, but they're all com composed of uh, people who are working on virus containments. You know, it's a very biological focus. Uh, I think managing the what what is often often called the sort of collateral damage of this uh, is, I think, something that should have a high priority in how we deal with this kind of crisis, also psychological effects, the effects of confinement. And, and don't uh, get me wrong, confinements are necessary. I absolutely support that, but it's true that for some people, uh, the effects are, um, are, are quite uh, disastrous of being not connected to other people. And I think that from a mental health perspective is, uh, is definitely a risk. Thank you very much. Uh, Jean-Pierre. Yes, uh, Thierry. Uh, this morning you said uh, something like we are at war or not. If, indeed, our president declared that we were at war. So the history of the post-traumatic stress disorder begins in the first, uh, during the first world war, sure, I had this chance to, to work and to with a colleague called the General and Professor Louis Croc. And uh, yes, he, I, trained, I know. he trained me in terms of uh, narco analysis. And this treatment was a, a weapon. This played a huge role during uh, the Battle of England because you had so many planes, but so few pilots. So as as quick as possible, when one pilot was taken back from the sea where he did land, we would inject him and he would go back to his plane in the next hour. So it's a, it's a treatment, it's a physiological, it's a, it's a somatic treatment which treats this kind of psychosomatic disease. It's a disease. Uh, Second, we had uh, much more information than uh, with the uh, other wars, including uh, the U US in Iraq, for instance, where we discovered that people treated with ketamine for anesthesia didn't develop post-traumatic stress disorders. It's why now we have a first new treatment for 50 years called esketamine, which is an injection by nose to treat resistant depressions. So observing this war situation, treating these people in uh, emergencies has, has lead to new treatments. So, so I insist there is a real medical condition. It's not an impression or whatever. 
What I would add to is that I insisted on hypersensibility. Hypersensibility is one face of the, of the coin. The other one is toxic abuse. It's dependency. So you, addictions is linked to hypersensibility. If you make the diagnosis, if you help people deal with this hypersensibility, you help them cut with addictions. Two very specific questions. What, what is the definition of a trauma? Because, because the, it's, it, well, all of us uh, are traumatized every day by, by many things. So the, this, this is very low level uh, uh, traumas. But when, when is a, a, a shock uh, uh, so high that it becomes a real a trauma? For instance, in that, if, I, if you take, if you compare a real war uh, and uh, the current situation of a pandemic, one feels that it is not the same magnitude. Uh, so, so how how do you define medically the 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 the, the level where the the, the real trauma uh, uh, exists? I did it, my dear Thierry. It's dealing with your own sensibility. The same event has not the same impact. I was with Professor uh, Rick Rock at the, uh, at the Saint Michel station during the bombing. Oh, yeah. Some mm -hmm. people were there, they were not shocked at all. Some people now are still under treatment. So it's not the event by itself, it's the way you receive it, the way you interpret it, and the way you will deal with it. Some people had a huge post-traumatic tra trauma by just losing their cat. And it's serious for them. It's not uh, the, the, it's not only the, what you can think of the uh, explosions or crash uh, airplane and so forth. It's, it's the way you receive it and your sensitivity. It's why I insisted on hypersensitivity. Well, thank you very much. And, and of course, there are statistics which show the percentage of the population or the distribution of our population. And, and, and uh, that's an also an epidemiologist uh, study. There are, there are epidemiologist studies on this sensitivity that, that yes. exists, I suppose. Yes, but this is uh, the practitioner knows because when I said we still have something like 3% of the people in the Saint Michel station under treatment now, three yeah. percent. It's it's a very low uh, yeah. quantity, but still there, still there. Yeah. Yeah. So now I would like uh, all of you to try and answer uh, my question. So I repeat it. The question is, uh, what kind of recommendation, or if not recommendation at this stage? Uh, what what do you think should be deepened in order to uh, uh, to shape to, or to start shaping some uh, global policy uh, some uh, some global policy uh, elements uh, that do not exist uh, today uh, on this issue of uh, mental uh, health and addictions. So a brief, if you could, uh, each of you try to give brief answer. Again, I, 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 I use the word recommendations, but I don't, it's, it's, it's a premature, but at least some, some ideas which, which we could try to, to deepen within uh, or outside the framework of the World Policy Conference. So but I would answer by one point, just one point. Did you know about these kind of psychological tests? Did you know about genetic tests? Did you know about this new uh, MRI? Most of you didn't. So my answer is education, education, training for MDs, for psychologists, and, and, and share this kind of knowledge much more. Thank you very much, Roberto. Uh, well, I think that uh, uh, what's uh, very important from the larger, let's say, definition of mental health 
is do not to undermine uh, the uh, supranational institution that we already have and they are doing a very good work, which is basically WHO. It's really irresponsible to uh, undermine the authority. It is very, uh, very, very something very bad, and it should come from governments as, as it happened. On the other hand, WHO has a great responsibility. It doesn't have to appear in any way something which is related to politics. WHO has to be only science. So that, that is something we already have, and we have learned that uh, uh, the stressful situation, fake news, blaming other people can really undermine uh, the geopolitical equilibrium, bringing something which we don't want, because collaboration uh, is, is, is the basis of the advances. We don't have to forget that the vaccine was made by uh, two American companies in an unprecedented uh, short time, but the sequence of the virus was provided uh, January 10, but uh, ch by Chinese scientists. This happened because the Chinese scientists released the, the, the sequence, and American scientists and German scientists worked on it. So I think that uh, at the very end of the story, we, we have shown uh, in practical terms how much uh, collaboration between countries can be very good for everybody. Uh, and so we, I really personally hope that WHO will keep on retaining the moral and scientific authority that it has uh, without, uh, you know, politicians going to undermine them. Well, thank you, Roberto. Uh, I think this uh, is also related to the education uh, aspect, of course, that is to, 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 to let better know uh, what uh, real authorities uh, have to say, uh, if I understood uh, properly. But if, if such is the, the problem, it seems to me one of the problems is that uh, uh, the, great, the vast majority of the population, of populations, are uh, even if they are educated in a very in a very basic sense, they don't know much about complex uh, issues. You know, the, the, uh, the, that's very clear. You know, most uh, people, ordinary people, in, in, in average people, do not know much about economics unless they were trained in economics. They don't know much about, about medicine uh, unless they were trained as uh, medical doctors and so forth and so on. And nevertheless, in a democracy. Uh, 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 everybody has a right to express uh, himself in every field, including those where he has no particular education. And this uh, means that uh, it can work only if trust is there. So we are always back to the same to the same question because it's impossible for anyone to be a perfect citizen. That is a citizen that would be able to make. Uh, well thought uh, judgments on every kind of issue. Uh, so if you are not uh, able to do uh, so yourself, if any individual cannot do that, it means that you have to trust uh, uh, some sort of authorities uh, over the, the uh, in, in, in all the fields and dimensions where you, are, you yourself are not particularly competent. So we are always back to the same problem. Is it not true? Yes, yes, I think I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, Michael? Yes. Uh, my, uh, well, some of the things that I would like to highlight is um, I think three things. One of the things that we didn't talk so much about it in this session, but it has been one of the common threads, I think, today. Uh, what I mentioned data, data, data. And uh, Mr. Moria, for instance, um, mentioned this uh, um, about the interoperability internationally when it comes to health data. We don't have such a thing as an international data system like we have in, in banking, for instance. Um, and we all know that if you want to improve something, uh, you need to measure it. And it may not be feasible to have an international health data system in a short term but what we can definitely do and that's what we, uh, we well we spend a lot of time on that at OECD bringing together uh, stakeholders and countries and develop algorithms together to be able to learn from each other to compare 
and uh, like we do in PISA, but also in other data collections, that's a really a way to facilitate international learning, I think, also in this domain. Uh, specifically for the area of mental health, we have developed also a mental health, international mental health framework. Um, but, well, there's no time to dive into that, but one thing that really stands out if you talk about it experts all over the world is that there is a problem with access and there's a problem with awareness of this uh, problem of mental health because we have this uh, striking figure of what we said 50 percent of the population uh, has uh, to deal with some mental health issue with once in your life but another striking figure is that we know that uh, across the OECD that about 80 percent of people who have mental health problems remain treated so they never find the way to a health care and that is a huge problem that has to do with stigma on it which might be much more in some cultures than others and it has to uh, it is related to access and this is a major issue i think that that we need to work on and and my last comment is well it is is connected to the, the story that I already told. I think the, in the way we think about mental health and we think it, about how we design health systems is that we should think about mental health not just in terms of disease or disorders, but also in terms of quality of life. Because it's not just, well, let's move away a, a bit from just this disease focus towards a more people centered focus well thank you very much we are now approaching uh, the the end i think uh, it was good michael to uh, come back to this uh, question which was raised uh, several times this morning about data uh, but i think that uh, data 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 is is not enough because an algorithm is, is, is not uh, enough too, because the problem is uh, the mindset of the people who interpret data and the mindset of people of people who uh, uh, build uh, algorithm. For instance, uh, if you are uh, an economist uh, trying to interpret uh, uh, the, the world uh, today in a, in, a, in a very global way, if you are a Marxist, uh, there are still people who think uh, like uh, in, in Marxist uh, terms. Uh, if you are a Marxist or if you are a liberal, you will uh, come to two totally different interpretations of the same data. Uh, so uh, it's not enough you know, to have, uh, uh, for instance, a common uh, data uh, base. Uh, it, it's important also to uh, agree, if you, if you want to act at the global level, to agree on some, on some uh, interpretation, uh, on, on some model to interpret the data. And, and here it's not obvious. I mentioned in my opening comments this morning, I mentioned, I, I, I draw a comparison with, uh, uh, with arms control uh, in the Soviet uh, time. You know that uh, when at the, at the beginning stage, at the early stage of arms control, when the American experts and the Soviet experts met for, for, the, first, for, for the first time, they had no common language. And, 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 and it took months, if not years, you know, for the negotiators, for the negotiators to uh, come to agree on a common language, you know, the missiles, for instance, had different denominations in, in both countries uh, and, 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 and there were much more complicated uh, issues. So uh, it, it seems to me that uh, uh, when one faces complex problems, uh, the, the first step, of course, is to uh, agree on the, on the language and, and some uh, principles of uh, interpretations. Uh, in, uh, in, in other words, data without models is almost useless. Uh, uh, so you need, uh, and, and if you are a good pilot and you don't have a plane, you, you cannot fly. And uh, if you have a, a wonderful plane, but you, you, you cannot, you, you are not a pilot, there is no pilot, 
you cannot fly uh, also. So uh, it's uh, there are complementary problems you know, to, uh, of complementarity. Thank you.